What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, April 4th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Buttigieg rejects critics of EV future, like having people in the 2000s saying we could have landlines forever. That, that, that next part's a little stew edition, so we I, I could sniff that one out. Next headline, big oil is beating big tech as eyes turn to crucial OPEC meeting. We love it. Next up, OPEC plus committee calls on members to compensate for overproduction, a quick overview of what happened at the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee monthly meeting. Great article there. Um, next up, Steve Cohen says the Fed may have a hard time getting inflation down to its goal. Interesting. And finally, in the news segment, new association for maritime nuclear creative. Just what we needed, another association. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the overall oil and gas markets today. Really not much happened besides a really nice price increase for oil. And we also saw crude oil inventories drop in a really interesting surprise relative to what we are expecting. What we covered yesterday. We will cover all of that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Let's do it. Where we hey, begin. Let, let's start with our buddy Mayor Pete over here. Let me get to that story. Uh, Buttigieg rejects critics of EV future, like people in the 2000s saying we would have landlines forever. I want to just give him a little bit. Hey, um, Mr. Buttigieg, if you are listening to this podcast, I would love to have you come on this podcast. I got a few questions for you. And when we sit back, I'm old enough to know uh a i know moses personally but b say, you're old enough i'm this you're old enough to, to you go back a ways yes i do uh me and moses are buddies and when we sit back and take a look at whether or not when did landlines come around it was because of the market adoption and technology and so it was I, I mean i remember having a line phone line and it was a party line and everybody big piles in uh can i do this and your neighbor up the hill was a psychopath and you didn't know what was going on let's get back to this story when america reports anchor sandra smith reported on cuts to the workforce for the ford 150 lightning in dearborn uh one third of the workers will remain big boys uh all of the you know all of the big boys are cutting out their ford their gm and the um uh union folks didn't do it biden killed union jobs what a chowder head uh tesla is facing more competition as gm and ford and stellantis and other competitive players start to make the piece of the ev market i agree with you my uh michael i don't see tesla losing out uh because i people are going to buy a tesla Oh yeah, I mean, it, it is absolutely way to go, Tesla. Love me some Tesla. Well, I think what 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 he what he says is in the wake of declining Tesla sales. This is his quote. Let's be clear: the automotive sector is moving towards EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Hmm? I don't hmm? know if the overall broad are, are are Teslas gaining market share. Yes, are EVs not as much as you would think? I think that's you know interesting. I love the. You know, we we love the the landline comment, but I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Buttigieg has got no clue what's going on. No, and and uh, I want to, uh, if uh, Miss Producer, if you could pull up this Tesla, uh, I want me a Tesla cyber, cyber truck. truck. I want me a cyber. It is bulletproof. I need me a bulletproof car. That, Except that's right here, look, it's going through the water. It can't work. Beep 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 beep. You know, you don't know. <laughs> Um, this is kind of like Biden when he's doing a speech, <laughs> you know, you okay. just, all right, let's, go to the gonna, next let's, let's, let's move on. What's uh, next. Okay. Big oils beating big tech as eyes turn to crucial OPEC meeting. I mean, okay. Well, oh, cha-ching, cha-ching, we, we, cha-ching, we got to have a little money. Most investors coming out of 2024 are not expecting anything out of energy. I disagree. I think oil and gas investments is still some of the best that's out there as 
par as far as performing. Let me give you this one right okay. now. Um, investor sentiment could go either way. Pickering Energy Partners chief executive Dan Pickering, who has been on the podcast before, uh, said he liked energy's first quarter number of people on 1.5 episodes in trying to commit whether or not they want to binge this is season. And Q2 may be the point where you see I'm staying up all night. Now, here's where I think it's going to happen. I can't come up with a price for oil don't know but b of a said today that they see 90 dollars. now i still think at 70 dollar oil and 80 dollar oil the oil the publics are going to be giving money back to their investors the privates are going to be giving money back depending on the deal and you and i have been covering a lot of deals yeah, I think from an equity standpoint, you know, this is specifically looking at, at at the Energy Select XLE, you know, um, um, index fund, which is just pegged to top energy companies, and it would make sense as we've seen prices rise, so will energy equities go. That's really all you're playing if you're playing energy equities. Now, within energy equities, there are companies that are doing better or worse. Yes, check out the deal spotlight. Shameless plug. We've got a new episode coming up next week. Ford Enter Plus, we did with John Farrell. We love the people over at Well Database. Trust me, guys, we love Good them. People. Go check them out. Um, but we we looked at a bunch of interesting stuff, and you know, it it really when you get into the which oil equities do I want to play? There's a lot of different nuance, but as a whole, yes, I would expect oil to be outpacing tech. Tech is in a little bit of a recession right now. People have sort of it's it, it's been a little bit overblown. I mean, the stock market is at all time highs. You got to take NVIDIA out of it. So if you look at just like traditional technology and, without and NVIDIA, oil and gas is crushing it. The only reason why it's somewhat close is the fact that NVIDIA has just basically gone exponential because of, you know, the boom. And, and as they should, more of a hardware play. They're a little bit of a software, but, you know, we can wrap them up in tech per se. So super interesting um, um, considering the fact that uh, – um, um, oil's beaten, you know, 13% versus eight and a half percent. So if you big, had that arbitrage this time, you'd be great. Oh, absolutely. You got to love it. Hey, let's go to OPEC here. Uh, OPEC plus this one is full of holy smokes, Batman. OPEC, OPEC plus committee calls on members to compensate for overproduction. Let yep. me give you a quote out of here. The JMMC held a brief regular meeting today as widely expected, did not recommend the OPEC plus ministers to change current levels of oil production cuts. However, the panel, which does not decide policy, but only recommends Recommends the course, said it mm. welcomes the pledges, blah, blah, blah. Partici recommends. Recommends. Here's where I got a little bit of a, a good a question on it is Iraq, Venezuela, and some of the other rogue nations are going to do everything they possibly can. They're going to just pump all, everything they can. One of the wild cards is um, Russia with Ukraine and the uh, drones taking out a big chunk of their downstream, which affects how much crude they can pull. Now, uh, Russia's natural gas is running like you wouldn't believe. They're selling everything they can pull out of the ground in natural gas and LNG to Asia and everywhere else. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, OPEC plus agreement will produce no more than 4 million barrels of crude in Iraq's oil minister. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I mean, they're, they're, they're seeing prices continue to rise without cut. Why cut if prices are continuing to rise, if the geopolitical tensions are going to happen, and if Russia is going to continue to pull back their refineries? Why cut if even if they're trying to put the squeeze on Biden? Well, here's where I still think the dark fleet's picking up, I think, another 15 to 20. I know you love, you just laugh every time I do dark fleet. The dark fleet tankers are being uh, sold off again, and there's another big chunk of them. About 22 of them are being bought right now. Of those 22, they're going to be going in. So, the you know, I, I wouldn't want to be a transponder salesman for the you know, fleets. Never yep. mind. No, absolutely. 
All right. right. What's next? Let's go to the feds. I want to ask you a question on this one, Michael. Steve Cohen says the fed may have a hard time getting inflation down to its goal. Uh, Let me give you this one. Uh, The fed thinks this is quote, uh, the Fed thinks eventually going down to come down to two percent inflation rate. I think that's going to be hard. Cohen said, CNBC's Andrew Ross Sworkin on Squawk Box. Um, I don't think they're going to get anywhere near it, and I think that uh, the effective inflation rate is around twenty percent. 18.5 percent when you take food gas energy and it ain't bidenomics is just going nuts on it now what do you think i don't think they well, have any way to do it i mean these people occasionally i mean these, these people, people occasionally show their stripes i mean this is this quote scares me out of steve cohen if growth is too fast you start getting constraints on labor and wages go up oh no wages might go up the war you might make more money folks and that's not good for steve cohen so i read this quote and it just made me sick you know god forbid wages go up for the working person well let me let me throw this squirrel at you this is an ugly baby uh actually being dropped off at a doorstep and that one is uh the california this week just had their uh, fast food of any chain restaurant chain of more than a hundred uh locations had to raise their uh wages to uh twenty dollars an hour And there are uh, fast food restaurant people being laid off everywhere. And then in the jobs market, another one came in and said, oh, the jobs market is going to stay low and in uh, jobs numbers are going to stay low because of the uh, illegal migrants coming in. And I'm like, you can't win for losing around here trying to I'm you know you. get the inflation. I'm, under. I, I'm against mandating companies pay certain rates. What I would like to do is set up an environment in which the incentives for an employer, because of the competitive nature of the environment, the exactly. strength of the dollar, they're forced to pay twenty dollars an hour. So that's that, where that's this is. So different. when someone like Steve Cohen says, "I don't want wages to go up." That means he's in favor of government intervention that keeps and suppresses wages so he doesn't have to pay more in, you know, as someone who's an investor, what's the biggest line item on on a company's balance sheet? Payroll. Uh, Wouldn't want it to go up 10%. So that's what I'm talking about. The competitive, I I want the competitive market environment to dictate that fast food workers make $45 an hour. Now, that's never going to happen per se, but you get what I'm saying. I, there's oh, no yeah, other you and I are in the same I'm interested in, whether it's setting a floor or a ceiling. Oh, absolutely. Uh, hey, let's go to our that, next Now, one. that's a can of worms we'd open up later because trust me, if Sandstone loves ourselves some good $85 oil, there's a lot of money to be spread around. So you, you know, gotta be, it's a double edged sword. We got to move team. on to the next one. Yeah, uh, yeah, we both of us are saying let's go to the next one. <laughs> nuclear new association for maritime nuclear created. I love me some nuclear and uh global group of companies. This is called Nemo. Now, is this like um oh uh Ray wasn't Ray Bradbury, but whoever wrote uh Journey to the Bottom of the Sea. Uh, Nuclear Energy Maritime Organization, NEMO, uh, to be headquartered in uh, London, officially starts second quarter of 2024, that's now, uh, will provide expert guidance and promote the highest safety and security environmental standards. We need to go to nuclear for every single big ship we possibly can. It can be done safely. And well, let's just say, put California in charge and it'll cost $300 trillion. Oh, you put any U.S. politician in there. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, they're going to make Nemo. money on it. It's great. I, I, I do love the name of this nuclear energy maritime organization, otherwise known as Nemo. Nemo. Yes. And, you know, it's like uh, journey, uh, journey, not journey to the bottom of the sea, but, uh, Oh, uh, what was his? Never mind. Okay. Finding Nemo, the the movie no. Finding Nemo. Oh come on, dude! I'm not, I'm old. I'm never mind. Yeah, you're right. You didn't yeah. have to Ju- watch Jules that. Verne. I, I watched that as a kid. Jules Verne. Jules oh. Verne. Oh, I see. 
20,000 leagues under, the, under sea. the sea, baby. That's a real story. Jaws. Finding Nemo, old some lame Jaws. little dory fish. And I mean, you know, considering it's called flounder, considering the name of the organization is Nemo, I figured you were just making a reference to a very famous movie that like most people know about. Oh, the only reason I know it's because my grandson, I was going to say at some, at some point you've seen it. Yes. No, I haven't seen it. I've only seen the little fish that I play with him. You know, it's like, oh, my God, I'm so sick of that. All right. Back to you, dude. All right. Well, we'll pay the bills here before we move into finance, guys. As always, check us out. World's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. The best place for all all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job keeping that website up to speed. Everything you need to know be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and oil and gas business check us out in the description below all the links to the articles all the timestamps. check us out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com our data news hybrid combo got some great new things we're working on um partnerships so please check us out again as always www.energynewsbeat.com i mean i i've really got two things to cover here in finance guys i mean overall markets you know, fairly flat today. We're only up about tenth of a percentage point on the S and P five hundred, about a two quarters of a, a percentage point. Um, excuse me, a quarter of a percentage point on the Nasdaq. Uh, S and P trading just a little bit above fifty two ten. Nasdaq up above eighteen thousand. Uh, we saw two year and ten year yields drop a little bit, about three quarters of a percentage point for the two year. The ten year about one tenth of a percentage point. So that two year doing a, a little bit worse. Dollar index fairly flat. Oil prices continue to run. We're up about six tenths of a percentage point. Settle again at a five month high um, at eighty five sixty five or eighty five sixty seven. We were on a little bit of run until the EIA decided to come in and drop a crude oil inventory number of three. 2 million barrel build miss producer if you can throw that image up right oh, now yeah you can wow see, you can see man 3.2 million barrel build for the strategic petroleum reserve um we also saw uh we also bought about 600,000 barrels for the strategic petroleum reserve so overall inventory is up 3.8 million um barrels we saw motor gasoline drop by 4.3 million barrels um we saw fuel ethanol up 300,000 barrels uh distillates down 1.3 million so crude oil inventories uh continue to be interesting really kind of held back where prices up above 86 before landing as i said in that middle of that 85 range brent oil not quite above we hadn't quite 89 83 as we record this stew so it's uh it's close we'll be rolling over to that 90 soon you know really the the only other thing um you know and, and that, that's really all i've got i mean i'm looking at the stories Stu. you know you know we not much really happened. Kind of all quiet on the Western front for oil and gas. As I mentioned, we've got a great deal spotlight. We covered the Cord Enter Plus merger and and you know previewed a little bit of what might happen. So watch for that next week. Excited to roll that out. But uh, that's about all I've got, Stu. Wow, cool. Off and running. We watching for before we let him go. Oh hey, I uh, got lots of stuff going on. Uh, we've got uh, some big ones coming out this weekend. Uh, let's see here, monday.com. Let me get my Monday quarterback going on here. And Energy News Beat. Let's see what production's got. Dun, 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 nothing up my sleeve. We have uh, Gifford Briggs just went out. We have JT and with Tunja Associates. And we have Irina Slob coming out. And we have several others that are in production. Yeah, no, absolutely great, guys. So appreciate appreciate that. Look for that. Energy News Beat Podcast. We'll go and let you get out of here, though, guys. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for checking us out. World's Greatest Podcast. Um, we're off tomorrow. or uh, uh, We're off Friday. You'll hear. Who are you going to hear tomorrow of that list? Who are we going to run? Who do you think? Uh, it's either going to be Irene. I have to go back up here. Let me go back up. It's either going to be Irina or JT. It's going to be a good one. I like yeah, yeah, JT's yeah. was good on M and A. Yeah. We may have to check out a, 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 a JT there. And then on Saturday you will hear the weekly recap. So tune in for that Sunday. We'll take the day off and we will be back in your ear on Monday. Have a great weekend guys. We will talk to you very soon.